Greetings to you. I hope you all are doing well. Today, we are going to have an interesting presentation, which is very important to each and one of you, especially those of you who are at the end stage of your studies, where you are required to submit your project paper or dissertation or thesis. So today's session is very much going to focus on research defense, okay? How do you prepare yourself and how do you excel yourself in this research defense? All right, so let me now just share my screen so you are able to follow the presentation. Okay. So let me briefly give you this understanding on what research defense is all about. How do you prepare for an excellent uh, thesis defense? Remember, a scholarly thesis defense is a forum that allows students to pre present their papers, uh, contents, and defend their thesis topic before a panel of examiner, who most probably be their professors. The students is then required to answer all questions asked by the examiners. At the end, the students are required to leave the room while the examiners uh, deliberate and decide whether the thesis is ready to be published or if it needs any corrections. Okay, some of these procedure may be slightly different from your institution, but the general approach is almost the same. So what I'm going to speak to you today is some of the fundamental aspects of uh, thesis de defense. This include uh, in the terminologies, what the defense is all about, the, the duration, other happenings during the defense, and tips to get prepared before you come for the defense, skills that you need to demonstrate what the examiners are looking for, and a final checklist for pre, which is before, during, and also post after the defense. What is the most difficult part in a research defense? The best thesis defense is a good thesis offense. So this is a famous quote. So therefore, be prepared to make a good offense from the beginning. What you mean by offense is you got to be well prepared. Okay, so make every member of the panel see that you know the core content of your presentation or your thesis. Prepare for questions that you can't answer. Okay, so these questions are something that you can be well prepared way in advance. You took the time to research and write your thesis. So the probability of you uh, forecasting the question that is going to be asked to you is very high. So be well prepared. So if you did not do the job or you did not do a proper job in writing the thesis, it will be obvious to the panel. Is there a difference between a final project paper, capstone project, thesis, and dissertations? In many institutions, they sometimes are used interchangeably for the same aim, which is to document a research project completed uh, as part of an undergraduate or postgraduate degree, whereby this report allows students to present their findings in response to a question or proposition that uh, they choose themselves. The aim of the project is basically to test the independent research skills of the student, whether the students have acquired uh, during the period at the university, all the skills that is necessary to carry out this research with the assessment used to help uh, determine their final grade. Although there is, also, there is usually some guidance from your tutors or your supervisors or advisors, the project is largely an independent research. It is your research. The final project paper or Capstone project is normally required in an undergraduate program to culminate the learning achieved for the program in which 
students pursue independent research on a question or problem of their choice, engage with the scholarly debate in the relevant disciplines, and with the guidance of a faculty mentor, produce a substantial uh, paper that reflects a deep understanding of the topic. The thesis is a project that marks uh, the end of a master's program while the dissertation occurs during a doctoral studies. These are common terminology used, but sometimes it may be used interchangeably. So the thesis uh, and the dissertation, the, these two are actually quite different in their purpose as well. A thesis is a compilation of research that uh, proves you are knowledgeable about the information learned through your graduate program. So these are the level of masters. A dissertation is your opportunity during a doctoral program, a doctorate program to contribute to new knowledge, new theories or practices uh, to your field. So the main, so whatever document that you're preparing at, uh, uh, as far as the project paper, capstone or thesis or dissertation, the main aim of this uh, academic technical report is the same, to test the independent research skills students have acquired during their time at university in a real project. Now let's look at thesis defense. So throughout this presentation today, I am going to use the word thesis. Okay, so although I'm using the word thesis, what I basically mean here, it can be capstone, it can be project paper, it can be dissertation. Okay, so I've used the word thesis. To, to baseline our discussion today that any defense, okay, any final year project defense, that, that is what I'm talking about here. So if you're about to uh, complete or have uh, ever completed uh, a graduate degree, you will surely have likely come across the term thesis defense. So in many countries, uh, to finish a graduate degree or even undergraduate degree, you have to write a thesis or even a project paper. In general, a thesis is a large paper based on a topic relating to your field of study. Once you hand in your thesis, you will be assigned a date to defend your work. Your thesis defense meeting usually consists of you uh, and a committee, okay, consisting of two or more professors working in your program. It may be different from one institution to another, but this, this is typically how a committee of we look like for a thesis defense. It may also include other people like professionals from other uh, from other colleges or those uh, or institutions or universities or those who are uh, working in your field. Okay, someone from the industry. So during your thesis defense, you will be asked questions about your work. So the main purpose of a thesis defense is for the community to make sure that you actually understand your field and focus area. So that's the main focus. The questions are usually open-ended and require uh, the students to think critically about their work. Note that uh, at the time of your thesis defense, your paper has already been evaluated. So by the time the examiner comes to you, they have already read your work. So the questions asked are not designed so that you are actually, that you uh, actually have to aggressively defend your work. Okay, so often your thesis defense is more of a formality required so that you can get your degree. So don't make it difficult for the examiner to pass you. Their aim is not to kill you or to, to fail you. They want to pass you, but you got to help yourself first. So how long is a thesis defense? So this will vary from one institution to another and, and the requirement of your degree. At the bachelor's level, it may be different. At the master's level, it may be different. At the doctoral level, it may be different. So this is best for you to uh, consult your department or institution. They will have the, the guidelines that is required. So in general, a thesis defense typically uh, will take about 20 minutes, but it may also take more than two hours sometimes. So I've been to thesis defense with almost two to three hours, especially uh, on a doctoral uh, thesis defense. This also depends on how much time is allocated to the presentation and how much time is uh, allocated for the question part. So normally the chair have to manage the time. The candidates are given an opportunity to present an overview of their work within 20 to 30 minutes before the examination uh, committee asks question uh, and managed by the chair or coordinator. So what actually happens at a thesis defense? 
first of all, uh, be aware that a thesis defense varies from one country to another, from one institution to another. So what I'm giving you today is a general overview. But a thesis defense can take many different formats in, in different institutions or countries. Some may be closed door event, others can also be in the form of a public defense where it is open for anybody to come and listen to your presentation. Some take place with two, some with more examiners and some a composition of examiners. So the most important first step for you is to clarify uh, with your department, what is the structure of your thesis defense and how it is going to look like. So you need, as a student, you need to know how, to, how this defense is going to happen and you need to organize yourself based on what is expected for the examination. So what happens at this is defense? Firstly, uh, in terms of your presentation. When you talk about your presentation, so you might have to give a presentation often with PowerPoint or Google slide or keynote slide. So normally, but there have been some institution where a presentation is need, uh, a formal PowerPoint presentation is not required, but you just speak orally. So it depends on institution to another. So make sure to prepare an appropriate amount of slides if you're required to present using uh, PowerPoint or Google slide or keynote. A general you, uh, good rule to use is about 10 slides for a 20 minute presentation. But again, uh, that will also depend on your specific topic and your style of your presentation. If you are someone who likes a lot of slides, but you're able to manage the time, then it's fine. But if you are someone who speaks too much, then having too many slides is going to be a disadvantage for you because once your time, 20 to 30 minutes over, the examiners will stop your presentation. The good news uh, is uh, there will be plenty of time for you, uh, for, your, for you to prepare in advance for your presentation. So you can actually practice and make it perfect in front of your friends and in front of your family. You can prepare your slides by using information from your thesis first chapter. So the first chapter really give you an overview of the thesis. So that will give you the framework that is required for your presentation. Uh, substantive uh, information in your thesis should correspond with your slides. So don't put something in the slide that is not in your thesis. So that is going to work against you. Make sure your slides are of good quality. Spend some time to ensure the quality is really good, both uh, as regards to the integrity of the information, okay, whatever you put in, and the appearance of your slide, your format, your font, your color combination, the images that you use, the animation. So whatever that you're doing in the slide, make sure it is of professional standard and good quality. The second stage, questions from the committee. So this is another important thing that happens during the thesis defense that you should be aware of. After your presentation, the committee will ask questions about your work. The question will most likely be about the core content of your thesis, like what you learned from the study you conducted, but also why you choose your topic or how it will contribute to the existing body of knowledge. You might also be asked to summarize certain findings. Read your full thesis in preparation of the question so you know what you have written about. Okay, sometimes you may have submitted the thesis a few months in advance and you have forgotten what is in the thesis. So please do read your thesis before coming for your examination. While you are reading in preparation, you can create a list of uh, possible questions and try to answer them. You can foresee many of these questions uh, you will get by simply spending some time rereading your thesis. So now let's look at uh, the most common question asked during thesis defense. So this is, I think, is, is the most important part of uh, my presentation today that can help many of you. Question one, in few sentences, can you tell us what your study is all about? This is a simple question that you can get. The question looks simple, right? 
many professors will tell you that most students get choked on a question like this, although it's a simple question. The question is simple, but a bit technical. To answer this question, you need to know every detail of your research project from chapter one all the way to the end. The question needs an answer in the form of a summary of the entire study. Therefore, uh, to ace uh, this particular question, you need to know very well in detail your abstract. If you wrote a very good abstract, this question will be a crossover for you, not a problem at all. So your writing your a good abstract becomes important. Two, second question. What is your motivation for this study? So this is a question that you must be careful. This question can be very tricky and it goes a long way in convincing your panel members that your study is worth their time. Another way this question could be twisted is, what is the research problem? So it means the same thing. To answer this question, you may decide to elaborate uh, on the problem investigated in the study. Your zeal to solve this problem becomes your motivation. So that is why it is related. Do not state uh, financial reason or the need to graduate as a motivation, as you may easily go off point here. So be careful how you answer this question. Question three, how will this study contribute to the body of knowledge? At some point, the need for justification will arise. And that is when you will be asked to mention how your study will add to the body of knowledge if approved. Here you will need to use your methods, case study or, or any unique model or conceptual framework used in the study to defend it. Your research area is your, fee, your, uh, your first contribution. Your method can be a contribution. Uh, you may be solving some trending issues. You may be developing a unique approach or model. So all this is part and parcel of your contribution to the body of knowledge. So be clear, what are you contributing? Question four, what is the significance of the study? Just like uh, stating how you, your study will contribute to the body of knowledge, you will need to state the importance of your study. To answer this question, you will need to highlight how your study will aid the government in policy development and implementation, how it will help other students who may wish to conduct research studies on the subject matter, and how organization and the society will benefit from your study. So be clear, what is the significance of your study? Question five, did you bridge any gap from your study? Remember, every research study must have a problem. Your ability to solve the problem and explore into areas not yet researched on uh, gives you the full marks allocated for answering this question. You must be able to convince the committee members that your approach uh, is unique and it has covered areas where much have not been done by other researchers. Question six, what limitation did you encounter? This looks like another simple question, but it is a tricky question. Most times the questions, the question is not asked to sympathize with you on your limitation, rather to get uh, loopholes to criticize your work. So be very careful how you respond. To answer this question, you must be careful with your words as you may implicate yourself. Be careful enough not to sell out yourself. Do not discuss uh, limitations in your methods or data analysis techniques, as this may imply that your study may be biased or do not, uh, or, or it is not well researched. Use simple limitations like difficulties encountered in combining lectures and project instead of uh, limiting your study. Question seven, what are your findings? At this point, it is expected uh, of you to present your results or findings from the study in a clear and conscious, uh, concise uh, manner. Always link your findings to your research objectives and question. This will make your panel members to easily uh, be carried along or else they will be lost in the 
so with the uh, loss in the amount of figures and charts and tables that you are presenting so be cautious what methods or sampling techniques did you employ to answer this question you must be familiar with your research methodology which is normally your chapter three in most projects this must be at your fingertips you have to know in and out about your method your ability to justify your your sample size and techniques will be highly uh, will be highly uh, uh, rewarded as you answer this question. So, question nine: Why choose this method? You should not only state a particular method for the study. You must also be ready and able to justify why you chose the method in a convincing manner, why another method is not suitable. So you have to know the drawback of the other method and why is it good to have this method. At this point, you are free to quote uh, sources or citation of similar studies where such methods were adopted uh, successfully. Question 10, based on your findings, what are your recommendation recommendation are very vital in every research study in essence uh, you should know your recommendations of hand question 11 your future research okay based on your findings what areas will you suggest for future research questions like these are just there to test your reasoning and authority in your research area Based on your findings uh, in a manageable scope, you should be able to suggest future research area in your field of study. How can your research study be put into practice? It may be easy for the computer scientists and, and engineering students, but a bit tough for management, social science, uh, science uh, students, uh, especially uh, work, uh, their work can actually be a bit more abstract in nature. However, you should try your best to be realistic here. Relate your study to current trends in your environment, your office, your economy, the government, the school, the church. Use relevant examples and illustration. This will help you to ace uh, this question. Question 13, how would you summarize your study to a practitioner in a few sentences? Your ability to convey technical information from the study will score you good points here so you should be able to summarize the findings of your study for a layman to actually understand so this is again something that you can practice way in advance what would you change if you were to conduct the study again so again be careful with this question do not be too jovial with this there is a loophole here just like your limitation, this question can be asked to identify your weak points. So be careful how you respond to this study. Question 15, what is your measurement instrument? In simple terms, uh, what data collection method did you employ for this study? That's what they're trying to ask here. Here you just state if questionnaires were distributed or data was gotten from from primary or secondary sources. So that's all that they, they want to know. So you put in the details over here on the measurement that you have used, uh, the instrument that you have used to collect this data. What are your research variables? Here you will need to convince your panel members that you know what you are talking about. So be very careful when you use all this terminology and make sure that these terminologies are used correctly. You need to explain your independent and dependent variables to convince them that you are on point your variables are present in your project topic and explain to them you need to identify these variables and know their definition as well as to ace your defense so this is very critical for you what are your research questions so this is straightforward okay simple question uh, the answer to this question should you should be fully prepared and sh it should be in your thesis so there is not much worry in answering this question Question 18, what do you plan to do with your research project uh, after graduation? Okay, here you are at liberty to say your mind. If you intend to publish it, 
this is the best opportunity to discuss and interact with the committee members. Maybe a professor there can help you. What source of data was employed for the study? At this point, you have to state the sources uh, you got data from. In general, you have to state whether data was gotten from primary or secondary source or both. You can further convince the committee members uh, by discussing on literature reviewed for the study, both theoretical and uh, empirical. Question 20, what theories or theoretical framework is your study based on? This is a very technical question, but interesting. But your step into the defense room, uh, before you even step into the defense room, you should know at least, uh, at least minimum two relevant theories uh, that relate to your study. For example, uh, the impact of motivation on, on employee productivity will be based on Maslow's theory and other theories of motivation. If you cannot find relevant theories to back up your, uh, your study, try to consult your supervisor for help here. They will know what are the supporting theories. Question 21, how would you relate your findings to existing theories uh, uh, on the study? To ace this question, one will have to read extensively. You should know existing theories on the subject matter as well as the empirical studies too. Your ability to, uh, to link your findings to previous research studies, whether they agree or not, will go a long way in validating your own study. All right, so question 22. What recommendations uh, do you have for future research? Your problem solving skill is put to test here by the examiner. You should be able to identify areas that will need more research. Again, this is something that you can be well prepared way in advance. And then the last three questions. What is the scope of the study? This one is cheap or sh I should say a bonus question. Here you quickly state the, delimit the delimitation of the study in brief. So put a scope so that the examiners are guided on the kind of question that they can ask you. What questions do you have for the committee? This may not be a likely question, but if given the chance, this is an opportunity to interact with the committee members and ask them uh, some constructive question, okay? Do not ask silly or, or too difficult question as the goal here is uh, to make the committee members feel that they are the boss here. So it will be go a long way in showing that you are a brilliant individual who can ask brilliant question. Do you have any closing comments? So this is your praising time. Use this opportunity to thank your committee members for their time and question. Um, tell them how much you have learned from them and uh, how you intend to correct the errors, if any, identified in your work. This can go a long way in impressing your internal and external supervisors. Okay, so, so this is key for you. So if you, have, you are able to prepare yourself in this 25 question, then it's all the best to you. You should be able to do well. Some bonus tips here. When confronted uh, with difficult questions, Adopt a strategy to make them rephrase or repeat the questions. So it is not wrong for you to ask the examiners to repeat. This will give you more time to organize yourself and think. If your research project is empirical in nature or you use any statistical tool to test hypotheses, try to know how you arrived at such conclusion. Also know how your data was analyzed and the various tools used for the analysis. Before your defense day, practice with your supervisor or your friends. Make them drill you with likely questions. Talk calmly with confidence. Do not talk too fast as this may uh, pave way for tension and stage fright. Read your project thoroughly. Know your basic definition and terms used in the study. Some tips here to help you prepare, further tips to uh, help you prepare for your thesis defense. Firstly, 
anticipate, as what I mentioned earlier, anticipate questions and prepare for them. You can really prepare for most of the questions you'll be asked. Read through your thesis and while you're reading it, you can create a list of possible questions. In addition, uh, as you will know, uh, who will be on the committee, look at the academic expertise of the committee members. In what areas would they most likely be focused so if possible, sit at other thesis defend with these committee members to get a feeling of how they ask and what they ask. If you're a graduate student, you should also generally be uh, adept at anticipating test questions. So use this advantage to gather as much information as possible before your own thesis defense meeting. Dress for success. Your thesis defense, remember, is a formal event. Often the entire department or university is invited to participate. It signals a crucial critical role, uh, rite of passage for graduate students or undergraduates and faculty to have supported them throughout a long and challenging process. While most universities don't have specific rule on how to dress for that event, do regard it with dignity and respect. Okay, this one might be a no brainer, but you still uh, need to know that you should dress as if like you are going for a job interview or delivering a paper at a conference. That is what is expected in your thesis defense. Delegate, third point here. It might help you deal with your stress better uh, before your thesis defense to maybe uh, to uh, entrust someone with the smaller tasks but important responsibility of your thesis defense well ahead of schedule. This trusted person could be responsible for preparing the room of the day for of defense, setting up equipment, or, or they can be your technical support in case something happened, or preparing and distributing the handouts to the examiners. So get some help. Have a backup plan. Okay, so this is important. Technology is unpredictable. Okay. There are no guarantees that your PowerPoint presentation will work at all or look the way it is uh, look the way uh, it is supposed to do on the big screen in the big screen maybe it is showing something that is totally not similar to your laptop or computer we all have been there okay technology can sometimes be difficult okay make sure you uh, have a plan b for this situation a simple handout can help with when technology fails or an additional fresh shirt for spilled coffee can save the day, especially if you're just about to prepare for your defense and you spill something on you. So be prepared for any backup help that you need. What to do when you don't know the answer? So this is another typical problem that most students have in their thesis defense. So this can be one of the scariest aspect of the defense. When being asked a, a question you cannot answer. While you can prepare for some questions, you can never know exactly what the committee will ask. There will always be gaps in your knowledge, but your thesis defense is not about being perfect and knowing everything. It is about how you deal with challenging situation. You're not expected to know everything. Examiners will sometimes uh, even ask questions they don't know the answer to out of curiosity or because they want to see how you think. While it is okay sometimes to just say, I don't know, but it will be better to say something like, I don't know, but I would think X, Y because of Z, but you would need to do a or b in order to find out so have a rational way of responding so this will show uh, the examiner your ability to think as a researcher as an academic and lastly your nervous how the nerves your how do you deal with your uh, nerves you will be nervous okay that is certainly is going to happen but the good news is your examiners will expect you to be nervous. So it is completely normal to be nervous. Being well prepared can help minimize your stress. But 
do know that your examiners have seen this many times before and are willing to help by repeating questions, for example, if needed. Two uh, common symptoms of being nervous are talking really fast or giving a nervous laugh. Try to slow yourself down. Take a deep breath when you feel nervous. Remember what feels like hours to you are just a few seconds in real life. So allow yourself to process the question. Respond to it and stop talking once you have responded. While a smile uh, can help uh, dissolve a difficult situation, remember that uh, nervous laughs can be irritating for your audience. We all make mistakes and you and your thesis defense will most likely not be perfect. You're not expected to be perfect and the examiners already have plenty of experience with this and will guide you through it. Also remember that your thesis defense is often just a formality um, and the committee actually, because the committee do not want to fail you, but don't make them to fail you. So what are the skills that you need to show to the examiners in your defense? Okay, whatever, at whichever level you are, whether at the bachelor's degree level, at the master's, uh, thesis or the PhD dissertation, the skills, there's some skills that you have to demonstrate. First one, defining and outlining a research area with clear questions. So remember, carrying out research is basically solving problems. So outlining this research area, the question that you're trying to find an answer becomes important. Identifying the leading issues. What are the issues that is encapsulating your study. How is this leading issue differs from one another in different parts of the world or in different contexts of the study? Sourcing the relevant information. Are you able to do that? This becomes important skills that you need to demonstrate. Accessing its reliability and legitimacy. How do you ensure your data collection is legitimate and reliable? Next point, next skill that you need to demonstrate, evaluating the, the evidence on all slides of a debate. Okay, you got to evaluate and justify the evidences. Coming to a well-argued conclusion, based on the study, are you able to conclude conclusively on your findings? So this becomes another important skill. And lastly, organizing and presenting the outcomes of your work critically, convincingly, and articulately, okay? Following all the guidelines on how to format your thesis. Okay, so this becomes an important skills that you need to demonstrate. So now before I conclude, a few important checklists to sum up the presentation, okay? So firstly, before thesis defense application. So do you have all the prerequisite before you go for your thesis defense? Check the courses you have taken and required number of publication if you need. The rule may sometimes change from time to time. So, so be sure that you know what is the latest uh, protocols. If in doubt, check with the dissertation committee or your department, okay? Have you discussed it with your supervisor? Besides the date, you also need to discuss the list of uh, potential examination board members and chairman if you have a choice, if your, if your supervisory committee have a choice to select, okay? Sometimes there is no choice. The, uh, ex uh, the, the department will actually do the selection because if you have a choice, then the, the availability becomes important. Check all of these uh, persons uh, do not have any conflict of interest in their role when you invite them for the examination. How far along are you on your completion? So this is to estimate when do you need to submit your uh, form to say that you are ready for your defense. Given the experiments, uh, manuscript writing and other commitments, are you able to make the deadline that has been agreed upon? There are, of course, other lesser important and urgency, uh, urgent matters that you should also uh, think about, especially in terms of uh, the logistics, okay? 
booking the defense venue if you need to, uh, printing shop to print your thesis, uh, designing the thesis cover, uh, and all the other defense uh, logic. Okay. So do you want to ask someone from your family members uh, or your friends to help some of this logistic so that it, it it takes away from your own worry because your main aim at the thesis is just to focus on your presentation. You do not want to be distracted with other logistic issues. If, if all this is okay, then you are ready to go for this thesis defense. So during the thesis, second stage is the thesis defense application. Make sure uh, you read and reread every single page linked in the university website concerning the, the whole dissertation process. When in doubt, do ask the dissertation committee. Draw a time plan uh, from a start to finish. Normally it's good, it's about, uh, you can have a time plan about 12 weeks. This 12 weeks, so what are you going to do from week one, week two, week three, to week 12 leading towards your defense. If you can afford to squeeze in extra weeks for the contingency, it'll be much better if something goes wrong. So check the meeting schedule of the dissertation committee and aim to submit your application uh, on the submission deadline of one of the meeting. Again, allow for contingency. What if you suddenly can't make the deadline? What if you fall sick? Okay. So you need to have some contingency. Make sure you still have the time, even if you are going for the next deadlines. Work on the publication uh, application. Block time for this. Don't do experiment or other things. Check again for conflict of interest. In many cases, uh, you may miss uh, one publication or have to resubmit the application because you missed something. So always check thoroughly. Remember, you need to get a number of signatures too. So make sure this, uh, those who are going to be signing your uh, form or thesis are available and not away. After submitting your thesis, you, the application form, you, make, you may take a breather now. But after that, uh, but during the same period, keep working on your manuscript, okay? you can still make the amendment before going to the examination board. Start working in your presentation at this point too. After thesis defense application. So once the application has gone in, so you have no choice but to make a defense. Okay, you cannot pull out at this stage anymore. So after the green light from the dissertation committee, uh, you should be ready with your manuscript to be sent out to the examination board. Don't listen to your perfectionist self to, to keep finding errors after errors in your thesis. Okay, so you have to stop at some good enough stage. You will never get a, uh, a project paper or dissertation or thesis that is 100% perfect. You need to stop at a certain stage get the okay from your supervisor as well because you cannot amend the manuscript after this while the manuscripts are being reviewed now is the time for you to focus on your presentation at this point you should have contacted the printing shop and know exactly the deadline of sending your thesis to them make sure you make sure you finish uh, writing well before the deadline so that your supervisor have time to review or edit them accordingly printing you can take a breather because you cannot change your thesis now once it has been printed. Okay, unless of course you have more experiments or uh, publication related uh, rules that you want to solve. So the printing scope will print a test copy for you to check. Check the quality of the print, especially the images and figures. You can always find more typos. So keep look out for this. Technically, you are just supposed to spot printing errors at this uh, lookout. Uh, uh, at this stage, but of course, if you spot a glaring mistake, um, you may want to communicate with the printing shop and make the changes. Distribution. Don't forget to send the panel your thesis copy. So sometimes it is not your responsibility, but the department's responsibility. But if it is, then ensure that your supervisors, your co-supervisors, and your department heads get the copy. After that, only after that, you, see, uh, you can give your friends or family members or any other person who may want to read your thesis, okay? 
include an invitation to your thesis presentation if it is a public defense. Okay. Binding the thesis, there is a deadline. Okay. So normally a deadline will be given uh, before the defense. So make sure the printing schedule allows you to do the binding because sometimes the binding may take a few days. A good timing uh, for delivery of the printed copies is one week before you nail it, before you nail the binding. So, and be careful as well because sometimes you need to hunt for the signatures of your uh, designated faculty members who can sign. So this may also delay. So contact them in advance and get them prepared before you see them. Now, of course, you work on your slide. You continue working on your slide. If you haven't already, there is time to make the slides, rehearse and revise. So remember, I mentioned to you earlier, try to limit between 20 to 30 minutes. Do not cram too much of result, but only highlight important findings. You have uh, plenty of time to elaborate on the Q&A. Consider also that they will be present be, uh, uh, before you. Because a, a thesis like this, which is completed, you cannot change anymore. So, uh, so be very careful on how you are going to uh, present. How flexible are you in your presentation? And then comes the most important aspect. Your thesis defense. Okay, dress up, as I've said, dress up accordingly, wearing suitable clothing. The defense can go on for some time. So you may be hungry. So maybe bring a sandwich for yourself. Be prepared with everything. You may want to order some refreshment if it is allowed for the panel or maybe the examination board will do it. Um, contingency and contingency. Back up your slide. Bring extra laptop. So try to be prepared at anything that can go wrong. That's what I've discussed earlier. Dissertation logistic team. Okay, who's going to do what? Who's going to help you? Do you have a team to help you? So all these things can release your stress during the actual thesis defense. Once you have completed your thesis defense, there are roles that students, supervisors, uh, graduate coordinators, faculty, uh, and the copies that you're going to be distributing uh, is going to be used for this uh, presentation. So students need to carefully revise the thesis, okay, required by the defense. So this is what happened after the thesis defense. Supervisor, after the thesis revision have been completed, the supervisor uh, and sometimes if required, a member or two of the defense committee will review and sign the form confirming that all required changes have been made. The form, an original copy of the thesis, a second copy of the thesis, and two forms are taken to uh, the graduate coordinator in most uh, institutions. The graduate coordinator reviews the changes and signs the form. The forms are then taken away to department office. The department uh, heads then sends a recommendation for award of the degree form and attachment to the faculty of of uh, the or faculty of the department of graduate studies the faculty or department of graduate studies and research here will then announce uh, to you by letter that you have completed the requirement for the degree which is awarded after the next meeting of the executive council or in some institution it, the academic senate and then only uh, the bound and unbound copies check the number of copies that is required all right so finally, the last slide here. Post defense reality check. Everything is over. What do you do? Few obvious things, 10 important things that you may consider doing. Cleaning. Take some time to clean out your clutter and free spaces in your office or in your home. Even though you might stay at the institution where you were awarded your PhD, or our masters, this might be the right time to decide what you can discard. Because along the way, when you started working on this thesis or dissertation or project paper, you would have collected a lot of paper. Okay, so if you're paperless, if you have been working digitally, then it's fine. But if you are, if you have been using a lot of papers, try to digitalize them, uh, scan the papers and important folders and 
uh, organize them correctly. All those prints uh, of the drafts of your dissertation is not important anymore. Okay, try to recycle some of these uh, papers that you can recycle. Clean your desk and try to keep it a little bit more empty. Secondly, send your copies of your dissertation. Either in between printing and def uh, and defending or after defending, take some time to mail copies of your dissertation. Okay, it can be to some important members that you think will benefit from your findings. Okay, it can be for your department, it can be for your dean, it can be for your mentor. So whoever that you want to send to, this is time to do it. Thirdly, rekindle your network. Remember, your defense is over. Okay, if you're a bachelor's degree student, then of course your aim maybe you want to do your master's or PhD. But if you've already completed your master's or your PhD, then your network that you get during the period of your study becomes important. So you might have uh, engrossed in writing while you were preparing your dissertation. So right after finishing, is the right time for you to schedule appointment to catch up with your friends and far and former colleagues. Write some emails to people in your network to catch up. Go on tour. Look for events where you can speak about your work. Okay, I don't mean uh, going for a holiday tour. Okay, <laughs> what I mean is really going for a scholarly tour. This can be conferences. This event might be something that can help you to step up further to the next level. How about bringing your message to an audience from the industry? How do you make your work? Uh, recognized by the industry, by speaking in a local school, uh, by speaking to the newspaper. So speak out to the industry uh, who wants, who, who you know can benefit from your study. Number five, celebrate in style. Is there something that you always wanted to do? How about uh, learning to do something that you have never done before? So you may have been stressed the last two years or three years working on this thesis defense and thesis. So this is the time for you to let loose. But while doing all this, don't forget you need to update your CV and update your list of publication. So this is critical for you at this stage. Okay, you've done a lot of things during this period. Uh, please make sure everything is up to date. Take some time off. Even if you uh, can't get any holidays, take a few weeks off, three to five weeks off and allow yourself enough time to fully relax before you come to the next stage of your scholarly journey. Make a plan for publishing. So this is as important, especially for masters and doctoral PhD students. Okay, if your thesis is a big book style thesis uh, and not a set of papers, then start identifying which paper you could write from a dissertation. Who do you invite as a co-author? Where would you submit it? Make a table with this information and plan when you want to write your first draft. By when you need to revise it uh, and by when the co-authors need to help you to clean up your paper further. So do this earlier rather than later and make writing this paper your priority immediately after you have submitted your thesis. Don't let uh, this sink to the bottom because if you let go writing immediately, the tendency is for you to, to not to publish or you have forgotten the essence of your work. So this becomes very key for you to do it immediately. And lastly, start something new. To get away from, uh, from the research you've been working on for three or four years, bring the bubbles back into your brain by starting something new. If possible, um, work on a new project to keep things interesting. Otherwise, take on a small side project uh, for your own interest and start playing around with something new. Okay, Learn a new subject code in another language, teach a course, try to diversify, try to cross the discipline, transdisciplinary or multidisciplinary area where you think your work uh, uh, previously can be helpful. Okay, finally, so this is the final slide. So I know I took a, a long uh, presentation, but remember, thesis defense is critical. 
it is uh, an important part and parcel of any journey, especially if you are at the final stage of your undergraduate program, at the postgraduate program, at the master's or doctoral level. So take it seriously, be well prepared. A lot of things that you can do can be well prepared. Don't get panicked, it is your work. At the end of the day, you are the expert of your work, not your examiner, not your supervisor, because you have spent the most time in this field. Your supervisor and even the examiners may have some vivid knowledge of this area. So you are the expert. So be confident and you will do well. All right. So thank you for taking your time to listening uh, to this presentation today. And all the best in your thesis defense.